Backwards Explained. I've been getting paid a thousand dollars <laughs> just from this podcast. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's called Audible. Okay, so I'm going to show you oh, right best here. Best and break out of it. Welcome to GT Not Live, where it's another day, another trip down into the back rooms. Oh, we got to restart to install the latest Windows update. It, it literally <laughs> popped up as I was saying that. Sorry, I was a little bit distracted. Do you want to restart and have some witty banter? Uh, you know what? I don't. I, I don't really want... <laughs> I, I'm fine with witty banter. I don't want to restart, though. I don't want a Windows update. Do you know how many Windows <laughs> updates I reject on the reg, Ash? <laughs> They've been trying to get me to do Windows, what, 11, 12, 13, 22? Who knows? I thought 11 was the last one that happened. Whatever the most recent one is. They're okay. like, hey, don't, it's free. Don't you want? No, I don't. I'm happy with how it works right now. Thank you. I know at a certain <laughs> point that I'll have to and that they'll force it. Like, I'll come downstairs. And I'm like, do, 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 do. Let me turn on my computer. Boop. And I turn on. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I didn't turn off my computer last night. And then all of a sudden, it'll be like, ha ha, stealth update. And I'm like, ah, oh, darn it. Nards. But I, you know what? I'm rejecting it as long as I possibly can. So hey, while we while we were away, I guess uh, we're back with <laughs> what? what am I even saying? With the rooms? <laughs> with I, well, I was away with the rooms. Now we're at the doors <laughs> and the rooms and the doors. <laughs> um, so what? <laughs> While we weren't filming, uh, Kane Pixels uploaded a new Backrooms episode, and so we decided we would react to that. Yeah. That's, that's the summary of what's going on <laughs> today. We're, you know, we've watched all of these, we've done theories about them, we've done shorts, we've done a couple shorts on them at this point. Now it's time to react, because content is just content is content. Um, we did, we did a short, by the way, over on Film Theory, if you haven't seen it, about how I didn't realize it at the time, but in reviewing all of the backlog of uh, Backrooms for an, uh, the theory that we did over there, I didn't realize that at the time, but our recommendations from our first ever theory wound up in the reunion episode that was kind of like the most recent main upload, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we did a short about like, hey, we impacted the Backrooms. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Uh, where the, the characters inside the show, inside this world, are using some of our techniques, right? Knocking out ceiling tiles to keep track of where they're going and like carving maps into the walls because that's how you would do it. Um, that's all smart strategies to use. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's cool to see this dialogue happening between Kane and, uh, and me and uh, the channel and theorists in general, which is pretty exciting. So anyway, uh, we'll see how that conversation continues now with the newest one, uh, Damage Control, which is very exciting. Uh, it sounds like, it, I would assume, based on the title alone, that we're probably continuing in the aftermath of this guy. Uh, so to recap, uh, in this one, uh, the one guy who had kind of faded away or kind of teleported through time shows back up. He's still in the back rooms. He's like, they've taken my life from me. He steals uh, the gun, fires on the team, actually kills someone. So that's our first kind of a official death death, human-to-human uh, -human death especially, uh, in the back rooms world. So that's kind of how that one ended. I'm assuming this will be the fallout. And then this one was kind of the, the middle child that happened in between uh, our uploads. That one is a slow zoom shot of a room that's getting kind of crazy uh, with green glow, which in our film theory we predicted is a time loop or some sort of like a time portal that's uh, projecting things from the future back and maybe starting this whole thing in motion. So without any further ado, first off, let's get King Pixels to 2 million subscribers, if you can. Can you go over there and give two King Pixels? He's got 1.99. He's, nine, right, nine. he's right there. 9.9? Nine, nine. Maybe, maybe he's just a big fan of Brooklyn 9.9 nine, and he just wants it to stay there. <laughs> But yeah, so if you can push Kane Pixels over there, just push them over the edge. Boo! Give him that double gold play button. Just a little shove. Just a little shove, a little nudge, a little, little love tap. And right yeah, there. yeah, a little love tap, but also, yes. if you want to subscribe to GT Live, we oh. are currently at 2.99, methinks. Yeah. 2.99! 99! Brooklyn 99! Making a comeback. 
Uh, yeah, we're at 2.99. Oh my gosh, we're so close! We're right there. Oh, that would be so awesome for GT Live to cross the threshold. Oh, going to three. That would be amazing. We'd have to celebrate that somehow. We would have to celebrate. Yeah. We have a that FNAF timeline. We could do like a big like live stream celebration FNAF oh, timeline yeah. talk back. Oh, yeah. Hootie ha. Hootie ha. Hootie ha. Hootie ha. Can we name it that, by the way? Yeah, I think the so. Hootie ha. The hootie the, ha. The old hootie ha. The, the FNAF timeline, <laughs> three million, three million subscriber FNAF timeline talk back hootie ha. Hootie ha. That's it. Yes. Title locked in. Tell Sam. Uh, uh, Sam will know. Sam will know. Sam, Sam will, will be know. aware. Okay. Sam will hear about okay, this. Okay, great. Damage control. <laughs> Let's do some damage control, shall we? I feel like that's the story of my life. Constant damage control. Let's see what's going on in the back rooms. When it comes to citing sources. Let's see what's going on with Grammarly. Details matter. Man, Grammarly, what a, what details a great details matter, man. What a great supporter of online content. Automated and seamless. Tell me if you does anyone use Grammarly? I do. Do you? Yeah. Really? At home. Yes. Does it help? Uh sometimes. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Let me know in the comments. Has I I have never checked out Even Grammarly. I see a lot of ads for it. Mistakes. Get me this to talk about it right now. I appreciate that they advertise on a bunch of stuff. I'm curious. The main thing about Grammarly for me is that I usually start like sentences I type with I think yeah. or maybe because I'm not super confident or I don't come off as super confident. Yeah. So they're like, strike that. Come off as more confident. Oh, really? Be assertive. Oh, gra Grammarly is like I, one part. Like, I was grammar like, this check. is free therapy. Yeah, I was gonna say one part grammar check, one part better help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Existing is exhausting, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Be more confident in yourself. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh man, they they just had to pay for that. I'm sorry <laughs> that we got to the end of that ad. They paid the full ad amount for that one. Oh, there's oh. a second. Second for Invisiviz. Seems we are not logged in. No, certainly not. Okay, hey, everyone's getting paid for this one. <laughs> Great. Okay, hold up. Closed captions are on, okay. We need immediate arms support of room 14C. My team now are being held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat, please send immediate arms support to room 14C on your back. Okay, so that's what happened last time. Last time on the back rooms. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. This is, this is picking up right where it left off. So that was the B team then? That was the other team, right? Because they broke off. So originally when, when this whole thing started, one team went off and explored the one chunk. The other team was working on the pitfalls section, checking out the green door that's back there. And so we, we, the story kind of divided at that point. Okay. Okay, so that's the gunshot. Oh, wow. This is wild. <laughs> this is like the most action that the back rooms have seen. That was just really funny to me. Yeah! He's on the move. Right? At first I'm like, what is that? Is that like a new monster? But it's, it's, um, uh, what's his face? What's his name? Okay, so there's Peter. At first I thought this was like a little monster guy running. Woo! There it goes! But it's actually Peter Tench. Uh, I forgot that he's wearing all black for some reason. Uh, presumably because he's out of his hazmat suit, I guess. Peter Tench. Look at him go! I like how he's like, kind of like... You can't see his head so well, so he looks like a hunched little guy. He does. Oh! Whoa! Oh, man. Oh, wow. He is... He is really going for it. He's making a break. Just get out of there, man. Just keep going. So all of this is... 
kind of telling us a little bit more about him. Because he was found, and the higher-ups were talking about, like, hey, Peter has re-shown up. He was found in one of the, the, the control booth rooms, right? And so the question is, why wasn't he released? Why is he still in the back rooms after already been being discovered? And it seems like it's because... It seems like it's because Async has, like, forced him to stay in there, right? Ooh, was there, was there anything there? Looked like there was, like, a brief something or other. No, it's just that guy. Okay. Yeah, so now, okay, so now he's... You could say that this is a security breach. <laughs> I'll turn off all that so we can hear. Yeah, but, but really, that'd be great. Here he goes. He be running! Arr! Marathon man! He pulls like the old Apple commercial. Oh! Oh, he's locking the door! <laughs> Smart move. That was built after his time though, so kudos to him to figure that out. Inconveniences caused by our decision to keep you here overnight. Now, it appears that the situation has reached a point of some stability. Uh, we'll, we're still looking into a few things, uh, but I feel that we can now properly address what occurred without running into speculation. Oh man, what happened last night here's the PR story. Should not have happened. Not here, not with us. What occurred was a gross misunderstanding that was the result of some severe information mismanagement. Hmm. Even now, I believe most of you still have an incomplete idea of what took place last night. Uh, so, uh, before I fill you in, I need to address the fact that there has been information deliberately withheld from many of you on the project. Oh. Uh, now, these choices were not made lightly and were done for only the best of reasons. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. <laughs> I like I like all the corporate back talk and like obvious like PR smoothing this has gotten. Like, like we're gonna say a lot of things. All of it's gonna be super vague, and we're not gonna commit to anything. Yeah, that. All that way of operating from the past, who may or may not have been associated with us. We do not condone that way, and moving forward, we shall move forward with better intentions of condoning ourselves in more positive ways. Oh yeah, yeah, good. Change. Change, we can believe it. <laughs> Great. Good job, Async. Believe in you. So, I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we Ooh, the authentic them. order of events. Sure. All right. Let's see. On the morning of March 1st, of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct their routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy... Oh man, we're getting character names to Peter Ten. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing the previously accessed branch of hallways. As you'll recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. Oh wow, so they're, oh, they're just giving us the full-on timeline? We did this video. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we got this video out before this one came out. Otherwise, people are like, oh, they just did this. Oh, wow. They're, so they're giving you the breakdown. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing. And as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Hmm. That is interesting that, like, so you no know clip into the back rooms, but then you can also, again, like, when you're displaced from time in the back rooms... Where, where do you go? Do you just wait? Do you just jump forward? I'm curious about the timelines and how they handle, like, time travel in the back rooms. Because that's always... Whenever whenever any sci-fi thing gets into time travel, you always get into this, like, tricky subject. And, you know, like, Endgame had their way of doing it. Back to the Future has their way of doing it. You know, like, there's so many different tactics of tackling. You know, how do you solve things in the past affecting things in the future? Is it a different timeline? Is it a loop? Is it all connected and you can throw everything off, but you can't see your former self or impact things? There's a lot of different things. And so here, as we're getting more and more into this, and we're starting to dig into 
the details around the timeline jumping and Peter Tench traveling forward and maybe some of these green portals indicating that we might be traveling back in time for some way. I'm, I'm really interested to see what time travel looks like in this universe because I think it's always a really fun and interesting like thought experiment to pick at. So. Obvious reasons that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public. So roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. Oh, we were right! It was a cover-up! Uh, that was one of the ones in our... So in our timeline theory, we were uh, putting together the order of events, and we made the assumption, or, or we kind of like inferred between the lines, that the crash in the vineyard was uh, what they were billing as Peter Tench's death, even though, you know, they didn't know where he was. So first off, I think admitting that, hey, family, your your husband, your father, whatever he was, like, he, he disappeared right now. Like, we're looking for him. I feel like they might have jumped the gun on let's build out a murder subplot. <laughs> let's build out, like, this this tragic accident subplot. You could have spent a little bit more time looking. You're in a big facility. Could have gotten misplaced somewhere. You know, wound up, like, trapped in a restroom in the back or something. You know, lock failed. Nah! We, we gave it a good college try. We looked around for a little bit. We couldn't find him. So let's just create a false story about him dying. I feel like that's uh, it's not doing great there, Async. Be better. Be better, Senator. So that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or at least that's what we assumed. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, yeah, so in the aftermath of him disappearing, that's when they started setting up the cameras. Uh, more security cameras around the place so that way they could keep track of things. That's when they first start seeing the monster and that, you know, that dominoes into a lot of other stuff. Because on May 8th at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Oh yeah, they're really feeling this Immediately so. following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where over the following days, a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, so far, so far, nailing it! I, I like that this one's a lore dump, but also it's like, woo, theory confirmed! Nailing this. It's like, yeah. And then he was held but held against his will, kind of, because they had to do tests or, like, figure out what was going on. But then they don't, they, they keep him there because they said he was dead. So they kind of got to cover it up. Yes, you'll get very little useful information. By all measures, what, what? Peter appeared to be in excellent health. I feel like that's very useful However, information, actually. provided one very useful tool in understanding it. Uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. The voices? Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession. Ooh. And in fact, had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today. However, for the purpose mm. of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. Okay. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the bench on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Oh, yeah. Are we going to get an explanation of all this stuff? This is, this is like, hey, we're, we're reset for a new year. Backrooms explained. this part of the back room. <laughs> Man, Peter Tench. <laughs> <laughs> 
For those of you that don't know what he teleported through time and then got published like life dot com. Are you guys hearing this? In the world. <laughs> oh, just in an audible audible ad. That's amazing. Buy and sell audiobooks and Oh, that was incredible. <laughs> You don't say, async. <laughs> I'm so glad that Peter Tench caught that on camera. <laughs> uh, I don't remember that from the video. Oh, uh, that's part of his footage that got cut, apparently. Wow. It's a key event. No, apparently so. He Peter goes off listening to these voices, being like, what's going on? And all of a sudden, he like, looks up. It's like, I've been getting paid. <laughs> It's like, oh, is this sponsored? Uh oh, <laughs> right. I didn't Peter, realize I was in an ad deal. Peter's like, hey, I'm not getting paid enough as an async uh, camera guy. I got I to gotta accept brand sponsorships whenever I can. <laughs> it's a, sorry for this mid-roll, guys. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, next time we're definitely going to log in. <laughs> yeah. Free. yeah. I'm feeling it a bit this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, time for Can you explain the rooms, the weird rooms? Following that abrupt flash you just saw, Tench proceeds back out into the hallway in search of his team. Yeah. But it is without any indication of the presence. Because Tench finds the weird, like, farmhouse. The next minutes of the tape uh, follow a fairly panicked Tench as he attempts to navigate his way back to the threshold. He does obviously find his way back. However, the threshold appears not as he knows it, but as it appeared on the date of May 8th. Right, so it was all built up, all this new security it stuff. Us back to the moment when we recovered him. So, uh, to summarize, from his point of view, he had only been inside the complex for several hours. Uh, so to him, all of the new developments surrounding the threshold were completely foreign. Uh, luckily, though, as I already mentioned, there were people available to manage the situation as it unfolded. And over the course of the following days, we were able, we, able to properly sit down with Peter and work with him to gain a collective understanding of what has happened. Oh, interesting. So they have, they have like new sensors and stuff to track where the voices might be coming from or whatever that interference is or what temporal jump might be? I'm assuming that that's what that is. That's cool. There was still the very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the <laughs> well, little detail. And reversing that would be no easy feat. Certainly not. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Ha! Ah. Hmm. 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 Press X to doubt. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. And all the while, Peter was sucked out here, waiting our going by. Uh, we did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of prolonged sensory deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, <laughs> Peter's mental state took a toll. You could have just given him like a, a, cubi a couple cubicles or something. You get, you're literally dealing with an infinite regenerating space. Ah, you know, yeah, what can we do? Look, ah, sensory yeah, I'll give the man a TV set or something. You could catch up. Give him like a Netflix password down there. Just binge for a little bit. <laughs> Come on, man. Go tell the... At least tell his family. Like, I get... That there's a lot of things that's like, oh, it's fake his death. We gotta backpedal some of that, but I'm, I mean, obviously the real answer here is that it's a shady organization that didn't want like the sins of their past to be revealed or whatever. But still, poor Peter. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, two weeks. At the end of week two, ah, it's not, they're like, oh, it took a prolonged period. <laughs> That's not, I thought they were talking like months for a second here. Though we don't That's have no reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while well, he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. I think that I think... I'm inclined to believe Peter in this moment. Head on the night of 
the 22nd, when while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above ground residence, <coughs> he broke away from us and, using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. Huh. So, they're saying that he was out of the complex. Which is good to know that it's called the complex. I don't think I've actually registered that at the, up until this point. So knowing that like the back rooms is actually called the complex, that's good to know. Um, so he was outside of it, but then he's like, "No, screw this noise! I want to go back into it." Press, press X to doubt again. I don't know if I just teleported through time and I'm being kept here against my will. Like, why wouldn't you run for like? I got my stolen security credentials. Let me go to the exit door out of the build, not not back into the infinite prison that is the yellow wallpaper of the back rooms. See, I don't believe you. We can presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he met door of the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Escape, escape through some alternate threshold and they show, and they show the, the farmhouse stuff. Through an alternate threshold, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. Huh. We can presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he met door of the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but so he must have seen this. The, the fact, okay, so the fact that Kane is showing this in this moment, right, is implying that this is the alternate threshold that Peter, if, if he was, if this is true, and if he does run into the back rooms in an attempt to escape through an alternate portal, right, or some other, you know, exit out of this building, that he must have thought he was going to leave through there, through the, the farmhouse door? Hmm. I feel like if he was down there and was filming it anyway, he would have tested it out. Still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Sure. Immediately after okay. firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost where Dr. Bloom... That's interesting. I, I know that there... You know, they're just showing like remnants of remnants. Remnants. <laughs> just showing a remnant of the fallout of the the big attack and stuff. But it does look oddly like moldy, you know, or like bacteria filled. Like maybe this is the origins of a new monster or something. Yeah. Right. Like like on one hand, this could be like just blood spatter, but it has that like dark, gritty. I don't know, like, spongy quality to it that that the bacteria monster that keeps running around, whether there's one, whether there's multiple, it, it has that look of it, or kind of like that, that fungus that is an infected people um, that we've seen in past uploads. So maybe he shoots him, and there's, like, this is blood, you know, remainder on the floor of this area, and, and maybe the fungus, bacteria, whatever, is taking it, digesting it maybe using it to to form or grow because this is an odd shot and it feels like the origins of one of the monsters in some way Inside, or connected them in some the way and headed to the threshold outpost where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing to standard and through the lower offices given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation it took our security team several moments longer than you ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging oh. the weapon into the ceiling in the process. Though. Hmm. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly, given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But, luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep 
in the direction of the hillside where Camers had last observed Tench. Now, there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward into a large rock. <laughs> Given the circumstances, oh, yeah, okay. it was not sure. something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. Tench. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What sure. we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. That we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is and has been deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted. Oh, hello. Oh, oh my. Oh, lots more. Okay, hold up. Okay, so that, that seems like a good breaking. Wow, okay, there was a lot. So here, uh, first off, they killed him, right? Yeah. We, we, can, we can all agree he did not fall off a cliff and bang his head on a big rock. As Tench was running, he failed to notice my giant metal club right <laughs> on his head. <laughs> he just ran repeatedly straight into my large nightstick. Oh, it's like, Tench, stop! Still leave my nightstick alone, Tench! You're gonna hurt yourself! But he continued to do it. He failed to notice my group of highly trained assassins looking to get him. <laughs> yeah, I know. am terribly sorry to inform you all. He, he... Tench fell down the side of a cliff and wound up with multiple bullet holes in his body as a result of his fall. What? what? <laughs> because he did not notice the large rock in front of him with multiple <laughs> bullets sticking out of the cracks. No, it was a bullet hill, Ash. Oh, it, the know, bullet. It's one of those hills where like the bullets grow out of the ground. And you're like, oh, oh, oh right. Oh, oh, bullets. Oh, 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 so oh ouch. Oh, 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 oh. oh, right in the spleen. Oh, so many holes. <laughs> oh, this is going to leave so many marks. I will not survive this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Y'all killed him. Let's come on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, not not buying that story that he fell and hit a rock. The okay. emotional acting was on point, though. I right. Am right. Terribly sorry. I know, to right. You can feel it. You could feel that the PR man was like, "Oh yeah." That we nerfed him. No, <laughs> we nerfed him to zero. <laughs> I. I was. I, I don't know. It's. <laughs> It was one of those where the the reaction of the group is actually interesting to me. Yeah. Because I'm like, there, I don't know if I would be relieved or sad because they sounded sad, like shocked and sad that he was dead. But like, this is also a guy who went on a rampage at gunpoint, or like like went on a rampage and put a lot of people at gunpoint. So like, I don't know. That's a hard one. <laughs> like, oh no, not Peter Tench. Oh, not the Tench. Oh, the PT. I love the PT. Yeah, so I don't know, I don't know about that reaction. Okay, if the wind is right, you can sail away. Once again, you're getting this. Uh, we called this out in our timeline theory, but once again, you're getting this like recurring boat, water, nautical theme that the back room seems to be having in, in moments. It's not every upload, and it happens in just like very small flashes. But the idea of like sailing away. We've, we've heard stories about things sinking below the sea, houses falling below the sea, things like that, which parallels, and in, in, in our theory kind of parallels, that this isn't the first iteration, this isn't the first loop, and that, you know, past iterations of this scenario have fallen down into the back rooms and, and disappeared under the ocean. And so, to hear, again, like, ocean and nautical and sailing stuff kind of brought up here is, is really interesting. Um... I'm assuming this is... I'm, I'm trying to understand what some of the drawings might indicate. 
corporate-y stuff. Like, like, it feels like I should understand more about what these could be outside of just like, it's a businessman walking away from whatever, and he's sailing away into his life, into the afterlife. I don't know. I, this, also, I'm kind of confused. It looks like, a, uh, like, a, uh, like an old-timey dress. Um, but again, or maybe a tent? Yeah, I, I thought tent? tent. You think tent? I thought so, because the, the yellow kind of looks like... Ground. Like, yeah, like some kind of terrain. It's giving terrain. It's 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 serving me some serious terrain vibes right now. <laughs> I mean, I can see it. The, the only problem I have with oh, I guess, I guess it is because I initially saw it as like oh, it's flared out and it's flowing. But now now that I'm looking at it from a slightly different, it's like the the dancer who turns one way and then the other way, but she's always turning the same way the whole time. It's the optical illusion. I wasn't really seeing it as like oh, that's the tent side going back and being planted in the ground. So I can see that. Is that, what, the back rooms? It's yellow. So mm-hmm. is someone camping out in the back rooms? Maybe Peter Tench was in his tent. The Peter, Peter Tent. tent. <laughs> the Peter Tench tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so lame. <laughs> oh, here, the die come just played it a little bit more. And you see the top of the tent. With spores or something growing out? I don't know. Gave this all to this project. Okay. So then we get this weird flash. Let's see this weird flash. Seems like there's a lot going on. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. Sure. Okay. It is the work Keep telling yourself that, bud. Effort and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. Okay. As that the sun goes down on Peter Tench. Peter is and has been deceased. Way to, that and, is done. Way to get us all into and your cover-up. There up. is nothing more to be extracted. So this is weird. Nothing more to be extracted. They're they're getting something out of his blood, right? Yeah. Right, like this. The the idea that they're saying there's nothing more can be extracted, and then they show the syringe specifically. And if we're dialing it back to what I called out earlier with like the blood and how the blood of the one researcher, doctor, or whatever his name was, uh, looks like it might have the the mold, bacteria, whatever growing on it. It feels like maybe people who are going into the back rooms. And getting exposed to some of this stuff, or if, like, blood is exposed to some of this stuff, it's getting corrupted in some way. And so maybe there's something that they're withdrawing. Or they're just extracting his remnant to bring another uh, animatronic to life because he went through so much agony. Remnant? One, one of the two. Well, yeah. <laughs> when I think extra- extract the remnants! The remnant! Okay, here we go. That's interesting. Okay, wow. Well, okay, so there's a lot now. All right. This... I'll have to brighten. This, huh, okay, so there's a code down here, for sure, it's reversed, it might be, reverse, reverse, reverse. not 100% sure, yeah, we'll have to grab that, this, so this is reminiscent of what, the green portals, I don't know, this doesn't look, like, Peter would either be in his hazmat suit or that black outfit. So this doesn't seem like it would be Peter Tench. But all of a sudden we're seeing the green port, like another green portal opening in some way. So I'm curious if this is tied to uh, Overflow, where maybe that's the doctor seeing it. Here. Oh, face Paul. It's, it's the corporate board of async dealing with, hey, we just killed a man, and now we've covered up his body, and now he shows up again. Oh, he's dead. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> this. What is this? It's a bunch of files. There's, like, bottles on the desk or something? Like, right? what? what so, is that? So you see a bunch of files up here. This is on some sort of, like, monitor. It looks like some sort of screen or monitor. Lamp. Bottles, right? It, it, it looks that way. I it can't does, tell. It? Hmm. And it's a, and it's this is a home environment, right? So that's the other interesting thing is unlike a lot of the other stuff that you would expect to see, this feels because of the the style of the lamp specifically, it feels very much residential, and not just residential, but residential in like what would this be? Seventies. Hmm. This lamp, uh, my, my grandma had a lamp that was a lot like this, or it kind of had this like, kind of like bulby 
bottom and the very straight side. It, it's very indicative of a certain uh, era of decor. And I think if I were to pin my like late 60s, early 70s is kind of where I would pin it. I'd have to research it. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. So that's that. So all of a sudden, and 70s, if I'm remembering this right with the timeline, is when we suspect that overflow first happened, which is where the green portal opened and might be what we said might be the beginning of the back rooms where um, the, the doctor to start this whole thing and kind of one of the, uh, Ivan Beck, one of the, the key founders of the back rooms project, you know, he's the one who signed off on this. He's the name that we zoom in on during overflow. Um, and so, you know, maybe that, maybe this shot here, maybe this is Dr. Ivan Beck being presented with whatever from a future point in time where the back rooms exist. Here he sees it. I don't know, if, <laughs> just face palms, uh, <laughs> and smokes a lot. <laughs> and then here, it's like, no, this is do maybe Dr. Ivan Beck's house or something. He's compiling all his, his data. He's trying to piece something together. Uh, here, we've got, you know, your... Typical uh, gym goer going to her jazzer size class. <laughs> yep. Right. I mean, she's in a like what looks to be like tight fitting spandex. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. something. I don't know why she's with. Maybe she's got one large leg warmer. It, it, we fast forwarded to the <laughs> '80s. She's sweating to the oldies. Right. Um. She's got a big leg warmer and she's got her spandex on. Yeah. Clearly. She spent so much time in the office doing <laughs> the techniques that we recently yeah. dis discussed. Right. And now she's, you know... L living her life. Yeah, taking better care. Okay, this is the same shot from before uh, with him looking down the portal. We're going to have to figure out what this is, the time code and stuff. Uh, wow, there's a, lo there's a lot of these. There's a lot of individual images. Interesting. This is clearly... What is this? It looks like someone running. I, I mean, it looks like they have some sort of oxygen tank or something on the back of their body. And it looks like they're in. For some reason, I, I, I mean, this is a, a complete shot in the dark, right? But like, for some reason, this feels like a like almost like a war photo where someone's got like a gas mask on and they're running into you know, like a, like a mustard gas or like you're trying to get out of a gas attack or something. Um, I don't know why I say that. I think the oxygen ma the oxygen or whatever tank back here is one reason, but also the pants don't feel like casual pants. They feel more like fatigues or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Fatigues. Cause it's not, it's cause it's not a hazmat suit. If it was a hazmat suit, I think you'd be able to tell. Yeah, unclear. This one is... He looks like a little star. Oh, he does. It's really cute. <laughs> Ta-da! Right, just like... I mean, it's, I wonder if we could pinpoint where in the world this is based on, like, this specific traffic pattern. Because it's a huge street. Yeah, it is pretty hefty. I bet someone from Geo... I bet a GeoGuessr pro would know what this is. GeoGuessr... Yeah. Let, let's call up our GeoGuessr speedrunner friends, because they'd be like, oh, yeah, well, based on the light poles... I was about to say the street lamps will probably give you some good information. I was going to say, street lamps and also the markings on the street itself, right? Because different, different parts of the world mark their streets in different ways. I could see that. And also the fact that they have standing poles for the lights and stuff. Bike and, lane. And the fact that they only have two. As opposed to like red, yellow, and green, like that might be a thing. Hmm. Okay. Oh, jeez. There was one more. Oh, and we're looking at him specifically. Okay. There's a little star man. Star man. That's us. <laughs> there he is. Uh, clearly, that's Peter Tench before he fell down the hill. So now <laughs> the, we know that the David Bowie song is about Peter Tench. <laughs> yeah, it's Peter Tench the whole time. Yeah. Star man. Yep. Waiting in the sky. All right. And also. Extracted. Let's hear the little audio. The audio is interesting. Uh, I, it makes me wonder if it's it's really short, which on one hand makes me feel like it's not hiding anything, but on the other hand, it's such an unusual sound that it feels like it could be hiding something. You know, if you ran that through a spectrogram or a spectrograph, I do wonder if that would yield something, because it's an it's an odd mishmash of tones. 
And when you listen to, to messages that are hidden in audio files, like visual in the spectrogram or whatever, usually they sound kind of oddly mashed together like that. It's too, it's really short though. And usually you need a, a longer chunk to get something out of it. Um, this last frame here also has something in it that we should probably uh, raise the brightness of. They're gonna make me identify these songs, aren't they? Kane. Cool. Seems like a guy hit that 10 minute mark. It <laughs> sucks. <laughs> oh, it sucks. What, what, what is, is this? Um, is this overflow? Oh my gosh. What am I doing? Oh, we, yeah. This light year gay. <laughs> Are you gay? Take our gay quiz to find out. Oh my God. Really? Wow. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Great. Gotta get you logged in on this new computer, Yeah, man. We, we gotta get out. These Are these the ads that people are being served? Uh, yeah. This is not great. Okay. No. I thought maybe that there might have been Yeah, I guess not. Shoot. Because I, th I was wondering if maybe th this was timing up. I was wondering if this was maybe like oh, the phone in the other room as, as the thing in overflow was happening, but I guess not. Um, what is this? Right? I, like, the audio design is obviously very intentional. During this moment, there's a gap, and then it starts again. So it feels like they're like, oh, this thing is happening, at which point time is standing still, or has skipped, or something. Which is why the phone stops ringing. It's not like someone stopped calling and then redialed. That, to me, is trying to say, hey, well, this portal or whatever is happening in the background... See, so now it's opening, the phone stops. Time is shifting in some way or whatever. And now it picks up again. Weird. Huh. And then we have this one right here. Oh, where was it right here? That is done. And there is nothing more to be extracted. <laughs> That could also be a weird dial tone, print screen. Uh, what we got? Photoshop. Baby, you can't stop my Photoshop. This must be Photoshop. Photoshop. This must be generic Captain Marvel. <laughs> Captain Marvel. All right, so after Photoshop roundly rejected us over and over again, uh, we're at uh, Photopia. Fo Photopia, or, or as I like to call it, Photopia. <laughs> <laughs> Photo P. <laughs> Photo P. <laughs> I kind of like Photo P. It is free and it is easier to log into. So that's great. Okay, this is just the literal image. So this is just the image that uh, came right before it. I'm glad that we went through all of that to, Sick, to, to get that image. That was totally worth every penny. Yay. Okay, but well, wait here. Let's try the other one. If we can get this guy. Problem is, how do I get rid of this stupid... Here we go. We're gonna let it play. There's nothing more to be extracted. Oh, there's no way I'm gonna grab that out of all those frames. They're all individual frames. Uh, let's see. Photo P. Photo P. No, oh, I grabbed it slightly too late. I was, I wasn't that far off in just grabbing it by play, pressing p print screen. So I will give myself credit for that. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Here, this one. I think the first one's gonna be better for us. 
print screen. There we go. Okay. So what do we got here? Well, how are we gonna, what's the best way to do this, do we think? I'm thinking this. Two, three, C, P, okay, so over here you have P, N, something. P, N, I? Or is that like a, is it a colon? Yeah, yeah, it's a colon. Yeah, P, N, colon. Uh, dash? Like a dash eight, eight three. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh, whoa. oh photo P. <laughs> <laughs> whoa! You really want this one pixel, don't you? It's the Kane pixels. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kane's pixel. <laughs> we found Kane's pixel. Which one do you want, man? Oh, I mean, take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, okay, let's see. Wow. That was that was pretty great. Kane's pixel right there, making a comeback. He's like, y'all forgot about me, didn't you? <laughs> 831. How smart are you, Heat Photo P? Hold up. If I do... Oh, let's do maybe like this. Do you know they want to get rid of it? You do, but you're not smart enough to be able to do the stuff underneath, unfortunately. She tried. Yeah, no. I have to give it to her. No, she did, she did great. I also like that we both had collectively agreed that Photopy is a girl. Yeah. <laughs> she understood the assignment. She did. She just didn't have enough skill. She, she wasn't well enough supported. Yeah, she needed to more. Complete it. She needed a little bit more. Huh. I was hopeful that this would give us like a time or a date. Would the version with the white text be easier to look at? Maybe. I like there was puppet wrap. That was cool. Puppet wrap. Puppet wrap. Okay, let's try. Where's that guy? This one. Print. Oh, every Looks time. like they just inverted the class. No, yeah, I, that's the only thing is I, I think he just inverted it. Oh, Kane Pixel! <laughs> Two, th the thing is so blown out. What if I did? Nope. What if I clicked on all the ads all today? All the advertisements. All ads <laughs> all day. Uh, let's crunch. That's a bit. It's down a bit. Is this going to help me out at all? Like 9M, yeah. 9 something. Yeah, it's it's tough. I might have to toss this one to the editors because this is more advanced than... I see an X, it looks like. Yeah, there's like some slight like... There's definitely a gray marks, but the way that we're looking at it, it is a little too hard to make out. Right. The bare eye. Here, what if I lower the grays? Eye of the bears. The bears. www dot this is like this is like the sweet spot kind of where you can I mean this is about as clear as I'm able to get it mm. at least this chunk of it and this isn't like an image we've seen before no definitely not yeah yeah this is brand new brand new hmm Dang, at least as far as I know so I don't know. I, I am curious, and I'm sure maybe people on, on Reddit or on Discord or something have been able to, to solve the, this one or at least be able to do a little bit more with it than I can do it in real time. Um, interesting. Interesting stuff. So async, shady. So what is the takeaway of today, Ash? I think the takeaway of today is async is shady. I think we're getting more information about the time loop and the time jumping, which is exciting because um, that's pretty compelling and, and feels very sci-fi and I'm excited to where it goes from here. Uh, the extraction stuff 
is particularly interesting. It seems like they're starting to try and figure out what the bacteria monster might be, what infection might exist down there in the back rooms. Like, are there health effects of being in the back rooms without there being anything, you know, any, any hazard suits or anything like that? And then lastly, we've got, I don't know, I don't, like, it seems like they're setting up kind of this next, this next iteration or kind of like the next upload, right, with the with the ringing phone, where it feels it feels older, like the location we're in feels older, but somehow it's it's being affected by this time loop. So again, or the, the whatever's going on, and, and again, I keep saying time loop. That is not confirmed. That is just the working theory that I have. But the idea that time froze or kind of like broke for a minute while while it stopped ringing gets me thinking like oh are we flashing back to time or are we impacting events of different eras um so across the board interesting stuff it's it's nice to have a series that gives us some solid answers and it's awesome to see that we've been right about a lot of stuff um so it's cool that we're thinking along the right track and that a lot of the things that we had suspected in our timeline ended up proving true and now it's just kind of a question of like this was a big point it feels like this was a big turning point in the back rooms and i'm curious kind of what the next chapter holds in store for us so uh i guess the ball's in your court there cane pixels so in the meantime guys thank you so much for watching and as always remember it wasn't a live stream but it was a video a video for you see ya